part one of oedipus at colonus this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by expatriate in bangor maine oedipus at colonus by sophocles translated by richard c jebb eighteen forty one to nineteen o five persons of the drama oedipus antigone and ismene his daughters a man of colonus theseus king of athens creon of thebes polynices the elder son of oedipus a messenger chorus of elders of colonus scene at colonus about a mile and a quarter northwest of athens in front of a grove sacred to the erinnes or furies there worshipped under the propitiatory name of the eumenides or kindly powers argument many years have passed since the events set forth in oedipus the king for some time after his fall oedipus had remained at thebes but at last the thebans moved by creon decided to expel him and his sons did nothing in arrest of that sentence his daughter antigone went forth from thebes with her blind father his sole attendant ismene stayed at thebes but was watchful there in her father's interests and on one occasion brought him secret intelligence after his expulsion his sons were at first disposed to resign all claim to royal power in favour of their uncle creon but afterwards they fell to striving with each other for the throne and ateocles the younger brother gained it polynices was driven out of thebes he went to argos and there married the daughter of king adrastus with whose support he is now preparing to march against thebes meanwhile an oracle has come from delphi to thebes if thebes is to prosper the grave of oedipus must be in theban soil if that grieve be in attica athens will prevail against thebes thus the wanderer old blind and destitute carries with him a mysterious blessing of the gods on the place where he shall find rest oedipus at colonus part one oedipus daughter of the blind old man to what region have we come antigone or what city of men who will entertain the wandering oedipus to-day with scanty gifts little crave i and win yet less with that little and therewith am content for patience is the lesson of suffering and of the years in our long fellowship and lastly of a noble mind my child if thou seest any resting-place whether on profane ground or by groves of the gods stay me and set me down that we may inquire where we are for we stand in need to learn as strangers of denizens and to perform their bidding antigone father toil-worn oedipus the towers that guard the city to judge by sight are far off and this place is sacred to all seeming thick set with laurel olive vine and in its heart a feathered choir of nightingales makes music so sit thee here on this unhewn stone thou hast travelled a long way for an old man oedipus seat me then and watch over the blind antigone if time can teach i need not to learn that oedipus canst thou tell me now where we have arrived antigone athens i know but not this place oedipus ay so much every wayfarer told us antigone well shall i go and learn how the spot is called oedipus yes child if indeed tis habitable antigone nay inhabited it surely is but i think there is no need yonder i see a man near us oedipus hitherward moving and setting forth antigone nay he is at our side already speak as the moment prompts thee for the man is here enter stranger a man of colonus oedipus stranger hearing from this maiden who hath sight for herself and for me that thou hast drawn nigh with timely quest for the solving of our doubts stranger now ere thou question me at large quit this seat for thou art on ground which tis not lawful to tread oedipus and what is this ground to what deity sacred stranger ground inviolable whereon none may dwell for the dread goddesses hold it the daughters of earth and darkness oedipus who may they be 
whose awful name i am to hear and invoke stranger the all-seeing eumenides the folk here would call them but other names please otherwhere oedipus then graciously may they receive their suppliant for never more will i depart from my rest in this land stranger what means this oedipus tis the watchword of my fate stranger nay for my part i dare not remove thee without warrant from the city ere i report what i am doing oedipus now for the god's love stranger refuse me not hapless wanderer that i am the knowledge for which i sue to thee stranger speak and from me thou shalt find no refusal oedipus what then is the place that we have entered stranger all that i know thou shalt learn from my mouth this whole place is sacred awful poseidon holds it and therein is the fire-fraught god the titan prometheus but as for the spot whereon thou treadest tis called the brazen threshold of this land the stay of athens and the neighbouring fields claim yon knight colonus for their primal lord and all the people bear his name in common for their own such thou mayest know stranger are these haunts not honoured in story but rather in the life that loves them oedipus are there indeed dwellers in this region stranger yea surely the namesakes of yonder god oedipus have they a king or doth speech rest with the folk stranger these parts are ruled by the king in the city oedipus and who is thus sovereign in council and in might stranger theseus he is called son of aegeus who was before him oedipus could a messenger go for him from among you stranger with what aim to speak or to prepare his coming oedipus that by small service he may find a great gain stranger and what help can be from one who sees not oedipus in all that i speak there shall be sight stranger mark me now friend i would not have thee come to harm for thou art noble if one may judge by thy looks leaving thy fortune aside stay here e'en where i found thee till i go and tell these things to the folk on this spot not in the town they will decide for thee whether thou shalt abide or retire exit oedipus my child say is the stranger gone antigone he is gone and so thou canst utter what thou wilt father in quietness as knowing that i alone am near oedipus queens of dread aspect since your seat is the first in this land whereat i have bent the knee show not yourselves ungracious to phoebus or to myself who when he proclaimed that doom of many woes spake of this as a rest for me after long years on reaching my goal in a land where i should find a seat of the awful goddesses and a hospitable shelter even that there i should close my weary life with benefits through my having dwelt therein for mine hosts but ruin for those who sent me forth who drove me away and he went on to warn me that signs of these things should come in earthquake or in thunder haply or in the lightning of zeus now i perceive that in this journey some faithful omen from you hath surely led me home to this grove never else could i have met with you first of all in my wanderings i the austere with you who delight not in wine or taken this solemn seat not shaped by man then goddesses according to the word of apollo give me at last some way to accomplish and close my course unless perchance i seem beneath your grace thrall that i am evermore to woes the sorest on the earth here sweet daughters of primeval darkness here thou that art called the city of great pallas athens of all cities most honoured pity this poor wraith of oedipus for verily tis the man of old no more antigone hush here come some aged men i wot to spy out thy resting-place oedipus i will be mute and do thou hide me in the grove apart from the road till i learn how these men will speak for in knowledge is a safeguard of our course exeunt the chorus elders of colonus enter the orchestra from the right of the spectators as if in eager search chorus give heed who was he then where lodges he whither hath he rushed from this place insolent he above all who live scan the ground look well urge the quest in every part 
a wanderer that old man must have been a wanderer not a dweller in the land else never would he have advanced into this untrodden grove of the maidens with whom none may strive whose name we tremble to speak by whom we pass with eyes turned away moving our lips without sound or word in still devotion but now tis rumoured that one hath come who in no wise reveres them in him i cannot yet discern though i look round all the holy place nor wot i where to find his lodging oedipus stepping forward with antigone from his place of concealment in the grove behold the man whom ye seek for in sound is my sight as the saying hath it chorus oh oh dread to see and dread to hear oedipus regard me not i entreat you as a lawless one chorus zeus defend us who may the old man be oedipus not wholly of the best fortune that ye should envy him o guardians of this land tis plain else would i not be walking thus by the eyes of others and buoying my strength upon weakness chorus alas wast thou sightless e'en from thy birth evil have been thy days and many to all seeming but at least if i can help thou shalt not add this curse to thy doom too far thou goest too far but lest thy rash steps intrude on the sward of yonder voiceless glade where the bowl of water blends its stream with the flow of honeyed offerings be thou well ware of such trespass unhappy stranger retire withdraw a wide space parts us hearest thou toil-worn wanderer if thou hast aught to say in converse with us leave forbidden ground and speak where tis lawful for all but till then refrain oedipus daughter to what counsel shall we incline antigone my father we must conform us to the customs of the land yielding where tis meet and hearkening oedipus then give me thy hand antigone tis laid in thine oedipus strangers oh let me not suffer wrong when i have trusted in you and have passed from my refuge chorus never old man never shall any one remove thee from this place of rest against thy will oedipus now begins to move forward oedipus pausing in his gradual advance further then chorus come still further oedipus having advanced another step further chorus lead him onward maiden for thou understandest antigone come follow me this way with thy dark steps father as i lead thee chorus a stranger in a strange land ah hapless one incline thy heart to abhor that which the city holds in settled hate and to reverence what she loves oedipus lead me thou then child to a spot where i may speak and listen within piety's domain and let us not wage war with necessity moving forward he now sets foot on a platform of rock at the verge of the grove chorus there bend not thy steps beyond that floor of native rock oedipus thus far chorus enough i tell thee oedipus shall i sit down chorus yea move sideways and crouch low on the edge of the rock antigone father this is my task to quiet step oedipus ah me ah me knit step and lean thy aged frame upon my loving arm oedipus woe for the doom of a dark soul antigone seats him on the rock chorus ah hapless one since now thou hast ease speak whence art thou sprung in what name art thou led on thy weary way what is the fatherland whereof thou hast to tell us oedipus strangers i am an exile but forbear chorus what is this that thou forbiddest old man oedipus forbear forbear to ask me who i am seek probe no further chorus what means this oedipus dread the birth chorus speak oedipus to antigone my child alas what shall i say chorus what is thy lineage stranger speak and who thy sire oedipus woe is me what will become of me my child antigone speak for thou art driven to the verge oedipus then speak i will i have no way to hide it chorus ye twain make a long delay come 
haste thee oedipus know ye a son of laius oh the chorus utter a cry and the race of the Labdacidae? chorus o oh, zeus the hapless oedipus chorus thou art he oedipus have no fear of any words that i speak the chorus drown his voice with a great shout of execration half turning away and holding their mantles before their eyes oedipus unhappy that i am the clamour of the chorus continues daughter what is about to befall chorus out with you forth from the land oedipus and thy promise to what fulfilment wilt thou bring it chorus no man is visited by fate if he requites deeds which were first done to himself deceit on the one part matches deceits on the other and gives pain instead of benefit for reward and thou back with thee out from these seats avaunt away from my land with all speed lest thou fasten some heavier burden on my city antigone strangers of reverent soul since ye have not borne with mine aged father knowing as ye do the rumour of his unpurposed deeds pity at least my hapless self i implore you who supplicate you for my sire alone supplicate you with eyes that can still look on your own even as though i were sprung from your own blood that the sufferer may find compassion on you as on a god we depend in our misery nay hear us grant the boon for which we scarce dare hope by everything sprung from you that ye hold dear i implore you yea by child by wife or treasure or god look well and thou wilt not find the mortal who if a god should lead him on could escape chorus nay be thou sure daughter of oedipus we pity thee and him alike for your fortune but dreading the judgment of the gods we could not say aught beyond what hath now been said to thee oedipus what good comes then of repute or fair fame if it ends in idle breath seeing that athens as men say has the perfect fear of heaven and the power above all cities to shelter the vexed stranger and the power above all to succour him and where find i these things when after making me rise up from these rocky seats ye then drive me from the land afraid of my name alone not surely afraid of my person or of mine act since mine acts at least have been in suffering rather than doing were it seemly that i should tell you the story of my mother or my sire by reason whereof ye dread me that know i full well and yet in nature how was i evil i who was but requiting a wrong so that had i been acting with knowledge even then i could not be accounted wicked but as it was all unknowing went i whither i went while they who wronged me knowingly sought my ruin wherefore strangers i beseech you by the gods even as ye made me leave my seat so protect me and do not while ye honour the gods refuse to give those gods their due but rather deem that they look on the god fearing among men and on the godless and that never yet hath escape been found for an impious mortal on the earth with the help of those gods spare to cloud the bright fame of athens by ministering to unholy deeds but as ye have received the suppliant under your pledge rescue me and guard me to the end nor scorn me when ye look on this face unlovely to behold for i have come to you as one sacred and pious and fraught with comfort for this people but when the master is come whosoever he be that is your chief then shall ye hear and know all meanwhile in no wise show yourself false chorus the thoughts urged on thy part old man must needs move awe they have been set forth in words not light but i am content that the rulers of our country should judge in this cause oedipus and where strangers is the lord of this realm chorus he is at the city of his father in our land and the messenger who sent us hither hath gone to fetch him oedipus think ye that he will have any regard or care for the blind man so as to come hither himself chorus yea surely so soon as he learns thy name oedipus who is there to bring him that message chorus the way is long and many rumours from wayfarers are wont to go abroad when he hears them he will soon be with us fear not for thy name old man hath been mightily noised through all the lands 
so that even if he is taking his ease and slow to move when he hears of thee he will arrive with speed oedipus well may he come with a blessing to his own city as to me what good man is not his own friend antigone o oh, zeus what shall i say what shall i think my father oedipus what is it antigone my child antigone i see a woman coming towards us mounted on a colt of etna she wears a thessalian bonnet to screen her face from the sun what shall i say is it she or is it not doth fancy cheat me yes no i cannot tell ah me it is no other yes she greets me with bright glances as she draws nigh and shows that ismene and no other is before me oedipus what sayest thou my child antigone that i see thy daughter and my sister thou canst know her straightway by her voice enter ismene end of part one recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two of oedipus at colonus by sophocles translated by richard c jebb eighteen forty one to nineteen o five this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two ismene father and sister names most sweet to me how hardly have i found you and now i scarce can see you for my tears oedipus my child thou hast come ismene ah oh, father sad is thy fate to see oedipus thou art with us my child ismene and it hath cost me toil oedipus touch me my daughter ismene i give a hand to each oedipus ah children ah ye sisters ismene alas twice wretched life oedipus her life and mine ismene and mine hapless with you twain oedipus child and why hast thou come ismene through care father for thee oedipus through longing to see me ismene yes and to bring thee tidings by mine own mouth with the only faithful servant that i had oedipus and where are the young men thy brothers at our need ismene they are where they are tis their dark hour oedipus o true image of the ways of egypt that they show in their spirit and their life for there the men sit weaving in the house but the wives go forth to win the daily bread and in your case my daughters those to whom these toils belonged keep the house at home like girls while ye in their stead bear your hapless father's burdens one from the time when her tender age was past and she came to a woman's strength hath ever been the old man's guide in weary wanderings oft roaming hungry and barefoot through the wild wood oft sore vexed by rains and scorching heat but regarding not the comforts of home if so her father should have tendance and thou my child in former days camest forth bringing thy father unknown of the cadmians all the oracles that had been given touching oedipus and thou didst take on thee the office of a faithful watcher in my behalf when i was being driven from the land and now what new tidings hast thou brought thy father ismene on what mission hast thou set forth from home for thou comest not empty-handed well i wot or without some word of fear for me ismene the sufferings that i bore father in seeking where thou wast living i will pass by i would not renew the pain in the recital but the ills that now beset thine ill-fated sons tis of these that i have come to tell thee at first it was their desire that the throne should be left to creon and the city spared pollution when they thought calmly on the blight of the race from of old and how it hath clung to thine ill-starred house but now moved by some god and by a sinful mind an evil rivalry hath seized them thrice infatuate to grasp at rule and kingly power and the hot-brained youth the younger born hath deprived the elder polynices of the throne and hath driven him from his fatherland but he as the general rumour saith among us hath gone in exile to the hill-girt argos 
and is taking unto him a new kinship and warriors for his friends as deeming that argos shall soon possess the cadmian land in honour or lift that land's praise to the stars these are no vain words my father but deeds terrible and where the gods will have pity on thy griefs i cannot tell oedipus what hadst thou come to hope that the gods would ever look on me for my deliverance ismene yea mine is that hope father from the present oracles oedipus what are they what hath been prophesied my child ismene that thou shalt yet be desired alive and dead by the men of that land for their welfare's sake oedipus and who could have good of such an one as i ismene their power tis said comes to be in thy hand oedipus when i am not in that hour then i am a man ismene yea for the gods lift thee now but before they were working thy ruin oedipus tis little to lift age when youth was ruined ismene well know at least that creon will come to thee in this cause and rather soon than late oedipus with what purpose daughter expound to me ismene to plant thee near the cadmian land so that they may have thee in their grasp but thou mayest not set foot on their borders oedipus and how can i advantage them while i rest beyond their gates ismene thy tomb hath a curse for them if all be not well with it oedipus it needs no god to help our wit so far ismene well therefore they would fain acquire thee as a neighbour in a place where thou shalt not be thine own master oedipus will they also shroud me in theban dust ismene nay the guilt of a kinsman's blood debars thee father oedipus then never shall they become my masters ismene some day then this shall be a grief for the cadmians oedipus in what conjuncture of events my child ismene by force of thy wrath when they take their stand at thy tomb oedipus and who hath told thee what thou tellest my child ismene sacred envoys from the delphian hearth oedipus and phoebus hath indeed spoken thus concerning me ismene so say the men who have come back to thebes oedipus hath either of my sons then heard this ismene yea both have heard and know it well oedipus and then those base ones aware of this held the kingship dearer than the wish to recall me ismene it grieves me to hear that but i must bear it oedipus then may the gods quench not their fated strife and may it become mine to decide this warfare whereto they are now setting their hands spear against spear for then neither should he abide who now holds the sceptre and the throne nor should the banished one ever return seeing that when i their sire was being thrust so shamefully from my country they hindered not nor defended me no they saw me sent forth homeless they heard my doom of exile cried aloud thou wilt say that it was mine own wish then and that the city meetly granted me that boon no verily for in that first day when my soul was seething and my darling wish was for death i death by stoning no one was found to help me in that desire but after a time when all my anguish was now assuaged and when i began to feel that my wrath had run too far in punishing those past errors then it was that the city on her part went about to drive me perforce from the land after all that time and my sons when they might have brought help the sons to the sire would not do it no for lack of one little word from them i was left to wander an outcast and a beggar evermore tis to these sisters girls as they are that so far as nature enables them i owe my daily food and a shelter in the land and the offices of kinship the brothers have bartered their sire for a throne and sceptred sway and rule of the realm nay never shall they win oedipus for an ally nor shall good ever come to them from this reign at thebes that know i when i hear this maiden's oracles and meditate on the old prophecies stored in mine own mind which phoebus hath fulfilled for me at last therefore let them send creon to seek me and whoso beside is mighty in thebes for if ye strangers with the championship of the dread goddesses who dwell among your folk 
are willing to succour ye shall procure a great deliverer for this state and troubles for my foes chorus right worthy art thou of compassion oedipus thou and these maidens and since to this plea thou addest thy power to save our land i fain would advise thee for thy weal oedipus kind sir be sure then that i will obey in all stand thou my friend chorus now make atonement to these deities to whom thou hast first come and on whose ground thou hast trespassed oedipus with what rights instruct me strangers chorus first from a perennial spring fetch holy drink offerings borne in clean hands oedipus and when have i gotten this pure draught chorus bowls there are the work of a cunning craftsman crown their edges and the handles at either brim oedipus with branches or woollen cloths or in what wise chorus take the freshly shorn wool of an ewe lamb oedipus good and then to what last rite shall i proceed chorus pour thy drink offerings with thy face to the dawn oedipus with these vessels whereof thou speakest shall i pour them chorus yea in three streams but empty the last vessel wholly oedipus wherewith shall i fill this ere i set it tell me this also chorus with water and honey but bring no wine thereto oedipus and when the ground under the dark shade hath drunk of these chorus lay on it thrice nine sprays of olive with both thine hands and make this prayer the while oedipus the prayer i fain would hear tis of chief moment chorus that as we call them benign powers with hearts benign they may receive the suppliant for saving be this the prayer thine own or his who prays for thee speak inaudibly and lift not up thy voice then retire without looking behind thus do and i would be bold to stand by thee but otherwise stranger i would fear for thee oedipus daughters hear ye these strangers who dwell near antigone we have listened and do thou bid us what to do oedipus i cannot go for i am disabled by lack of strength and lack of sight evils twain but let one of you two go and do these things for i think that one soul suffices to pay this debt for ten thousand if it come with good will to the shrine act then with speed yet leave me not solitary for the strength would fail me to move without help or guiding hand ismene then i will go to perform the rite but where i am to find the spot this i fain would learn chorus on the further side of this grove maiden and if thou hast need of aught there is a guardian of the place who will direct thee ismene so to my task but thou antigone watch our father here in parents cause if toil there be we must not wreck of toil exit chorus dread is it stranger to arouse the old grief that hath so long been laid to rest and yet i yearn to hear oedipus what now chorus of that grievous anguish found cureless wherewith thou hast wrestled oedipus by thy kindness for a guest bear not the shame that i have suffered chorus seeing in sooth that the tale is widespread and in no wise wanes i am fain friend to hear it aright oedipus woe is me chorus be content i pray thee oedipus alas alas chorus grant my wish as i have granted thine in its fulness oedipus i have suffered misery strangers suffered it through unwitting deeds and of those acts be heaven my witness no part was of mine own choice chorus but in what regard oedipus by an evil wedlock thebes bound me all unknowing to the bride that was my curse chorus can it be as i hear that thou madest thy mother the partner of thy bed for its infamy oedipus woe is me cruel as death strangers are these words in mine ears but those maidens begotten of me chorus what wilt thou say oedipus two daughters two curses chorus o zeus oedipus sprang from the travail of the womb that bore me chorus these then are at once thine offspring and oedipus yea very sisters of their sire chorus 
o oh, horror oedipus horror indeed yea horrors untold sweep back upon my soul chorus thou hast suffered oedipus suffered woes dread to bear chorus thou hast sinned oedipus no wilful sin chorus how oedipus a gift was given to me o broken-hearted that i am would i had never won from thebes that meed for having saved her chorus wretch how then thine hand shed blood oedipus wherefore this what wouldst thou learn chorus a father's blood oedipus oh oh a second stab wound on wound chorus slayer oedipus i slayer yet have i a plea chorus what canst thou plead oedipus a plea in justice chorus what oedipus ye shall hear it they whom i slew would have taken mine own life stainless before the law void of malice have i come unto this pass chorus lo yonder cometh our prince theseus son of aegeus at thy voice to do the part whereunto he was summoned enter theseus on spectator's right theseus hearing from many in time past concerning the cruel marring of thy sight i have recognized thee son of laius and now through hearsay in this my coming i have the fuller certainty for thy garb and that hapless face alike assure me of thy name and in all compassion would i ask thee ill-fated oedipus what is thy suit to athens or to me that thou hast taken thy place here thou and the hapless maiden at thy side declare it dire indeed must be the fortune told by thee from which i should stand aloof who know that i myself also was reared in exile like to thine and in strange lands wrestled with perils to my life as no man beside never then would i turn aside from a stranger such as thou art now or refuse to aid in his deliverance for well know i that i am a man and that in the morrow my portion is no greater than thine oedipus theseus thy nobleness hath in brief words shown such grace that for me there is need to say but little thou hast rightly said who i am from what sire i spring from what land i have come and so naught else remains for me but to speak my desire and the tale is told theseus even so speak that i fain would hear oedipus i come to offer thee my woe-worn body as a gift not goodly to look upon but the gains from it are better than beauty theseus and what gain dost thou claim to have brought oedipus hereafter thou shalt learn not yet i think theseus at what time then will thy benefit be shown oedipus when i am dead and thou hast given me burial theseus thou cravest life's last boon for all between thou hast no memory or no care oedipus yea for by that boon i reap all the rest theseus nay then this grace which thou cravest from me hath small compass oedipus yet give heed this issue is no light one no verily theseus meanest thou as between thy sons and me oedipus king they would fain convey me to thebes thebes but if to thy content then for thee exile is not seemly oedipus nay when i was willing they refused theseus but foolish man temper in misfortune is not meet oedipus when thou hast heard my story chide till then forbear theseus say on i must not pronounce without knowledge oedipus i have suffered theseus cruel wrong on wrong theseus wilt thou speak of the ancient trouble of thy race oedipus no verily that is noise throughout hellas theseus what then is thy grief that passeth the griefs of man oedipus thus it is with me from my country i have been driven by mine own offspring and my doom is to return no more as guilty of a father's blood theseus how then should they fetch thee to them if ye must dwell apart oedipus the mouth of the god will constrain them theseus in fear of what woe foreshown oedipus that they must be smitten in this land theseus 
and how should bitterness come between them and me oedipus kind son of aegeus to the gods alone comes never old age or death but all else is confounded by all mastering time earth's strength decays and the strength of the body faith dies distrust is born and the same spirit is never steadfast among friends or betwixt city and city for be it soon or be it late men find sweet turn to bitter and then once more to love and if now all is sunshine between thebes and thee yet time in his untold course gives birth to days and nights untold wherein for a small cause they shall sunder with the spear that plighted concord of to-day when my slumbering and buried corpse cold in death shall one day drink their warm blood if zeus is still zeus and phoebus the son of zeus speaks true but since i would not break silence touching mysteries suffer me to cease where i began only make thine own word good and never shalt thou say that in vain didst thou welcome oedipus to dwell in this realm unless the gods cheat my hope chorus king from the first yon man hath shown the mind to perform these promises or the like for our land theseus who then would reject the friendship of such an one to whom first the hearth of an ally is ever open by mutual right among us and then he hath come as a suppliant to our gods fraught with no light recompense for this land and for me in reverence for these claims i will never spurn his grace but will establish him as a citizen in the land and if it is the stranger's pleasure to abide here i will charge you to guard him or if to come with me be more pleasing this choice or that oedipus thou canst take thy will shall be mine oedipus o zeus mayest thou be good unto such men theseus what wouldst thou then wouldst thou come to my house oedipus yea were it lawful but this is the place theseus what art thou to do here i will not thwart thee oedipus where i shall vanquish those who cast me forth theseus great were this promised boon from thy presence oedipus it shall be if thy pledge is kept with me indeed theseus fear not touching me never will i fail thee oedipus i will not bind thee with an oath as one untrue theseus well thou wouldst win naught more than by my word oedipus how wilt thou act then theseus what may be thy fear oedipus men will come theseus nay these will look to that oedipus beware lest if thou leave me theseus teach me not my part oedipus fear constrains theseus my heart feels not fear oedipus thou knowest not the threats theseus i know that none shall take thee hence in my despite oft have threats blustered in men's wrath with threatenings loud in vain but when the mind is lord of himself once more the threats are gone and for yon men haply i though they have waxed bold to speak dread things of bringing thee back the sundering waters will prove wide and hard to sail now i would have thee be of a good courage apart from any resolve of mine if indeed phoebus hath sent thee on thy way still though i be not here my name i wot will shield thee from harm chorus stranger in this land of goodly steeds thou hast come to earth's fairest home even to our white colonus where the nightingale a constant guest trills her clear note in the covert of green glades dwelling amid the wine-dark ivy and the gods in violet bowers rich in berries and fruit unvisited by sun unvexed by wind of any storm where the reveller dionysus ever walks the ground companion of the nymphs that nursed him and fed of heavenly dew the narcissus blooms morn by morn with fair clusters crown of the great goddesses from of yore and the crocus blooms with golden beam nor fail the sleepless founts whence the waters of cephisus wander but each day with stainless tide he moveth over the plains of the land's swelling bosom for the giving of quick increase nor hath the muses choir abhorred this place nor aphrodite of the golden rain and a thing there is such as i know not by fame on asian ground or as ever born in the great dorian isle of pelops 
a growth unconquered self-renewing a terror to the spears of the foemen a growth which mightily flourishes in this land the grey-leafed olive nurturer of children youth shall not mar it by the ravage of his hand nor any who dwells with old age for the sleepless eye of the morian zeus beholds it and the grey-eyed athena and another praise have i to tell for this the city our mother the gift of a great god a glory of the land most high the might of horses the might of young horses the might of the sea for thou son of cronus our lord poseidon hast throned her in this pride since in these roads first thou didst show forth the curb that cures the rage of steeds and the shapely oar apt to men's hands hath a wondrous speed on the brine following the hundred-footed nereids antigone o land that art praised above all lands now is it for thee to make those bright praises seen in deeds oedipus what new thing hath chanced my daughter antigone yonder creon draws near us not without followers father oedipus ah kind elders now give me i pray you the final proof of my safety chorus fear not it shall be thine if i am aged this country's strength hath not grown old enter creon with attendants end of part two recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three of oedipus at colonus by sophocles translated by richard c jebb eighteen forty one to nineteen o five this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three creon sirs noble dwellers in this land i see that a sudden fear hath troubled your eyes at my coming but shrink not from me and let no ungentle word escape you i am here with no thought of force i am old and i know that the city whereunto i have come is mighty if any in hellas hath might no i have been sent in these my years to plead with yonder man that he return with me to the land of cadmus not one man's envoy am i but with charge from our people all since twas mine by kinship to mourn his woes as no theban beside nay unhappy oedipus hear us and come home rightfully art thou called by all the cadmian folk and in chief by me even as i unless i am the basest of all men born chiefly sorrow for thine ills old man when i see thee hapless one a stranger and a wanderer evermore roaming in beggary with one handmaid for thy stay alas i had not thought that she could fall to such a depth as misery as that whereunto she hath fallen yon hapless girl while she ever tends thy dark life amid penury in ripe youth but unwed a prize for the first rude hand is it not a cruel reproach alas that i have cast at thee and me and all our race but indeed an open shame cannot be hid then in the name of thy father's gods hearken to me oedipus hide it thou by consenting to return to the city and the house of thy fathers after a kindly farewell to this state for she is worthy yet thine own hath the first claim on thy piety since twas she that nurtured thee of old oedipus all daring who from any plea of right wouldst draw a crafty device why dost thou attempt me thus and seek once more to take me in the toils where capture would be sorest in the old days when distempered by my self-wrought woes i yearned to be cast out of the land thy will went not with mine to grant the boon but when my fierce grief had spent its force and the seclusion of the house was sweet then wast thou for thrusting me from the house and from the land nor had this kinship any dearness for thee then and now again when thou seest that i have kindly welcome from this city and from all her sons thou seekest to pluck me away wrapping hard thoughts in soft words and yet what joy is there here in kindness shown to us against our will as if a man should give thee no gift bring thee no aid when thou wast fain of the boon but after thy soul's desire was sated should grant it then when the grace could be gracious no more wouldst thou not find that pleasure vain 
yet such are thine own offers unto me good in name but in their substance evil and i will declare it to these also that i may show thee false thou hast come to fetch me not that thou mayest take me home but that thou mayest plant me near thy borders and so thy city may escape unscathed by troubles from this land that portion is not for thee but this my curse upon the country ever abiding therein and for my sons this heritage room enough in my realm wherein to die am i not wiser than thou in the fortunes of thebes yea wiser far as truer are the sources of my knowledge even phoebus and his father zeus most high but thou hast come hither with fraud on thy lips yea with a tongue keener than the edge of the sword yet by thy pleading thou art like to reap more woe than weal howbeit i know that i persuade thee not of this go and suffer us to live here for even in this plight our life would not be evil so were we content therewith creon which thinkest thou most suffers in this parley i by thy course or thou by thine own oedipus for me tis enough if thy pleading fails as with me so with yon men who are nigh creon unhappy man shall it be seen that not even thy years have brought thee wit must thou live to be the reproach of age oedipus thou hast a ready tongue but i know not the honest man who hath fair words for every cause creon words may be many and yet may miss their aim oedipus as if thine forsooth were few but aimed aright creon no truly for one whose wit is such as thine oedipus depart for i will say it in the name of yon men also and beset me not with jealous watch in the place where i am destined to abide creon these men not thee call i to witness but as for the strain of thine answer to thy kindred if ever i take thee oedipus and who could take me in despite of these allies creon i promise thee thou soon shalt smart without that oedipus where is the deed which warrants that blustering word creon one of thy two daughters hath just been seized by me and sent hence the other i will remove forthwith oedipus woe is me creon more woeful thou wilt find it soon oedipus thou hast my child creon and will have this one ere long oedipus alas friends what will ye do will ye forsake me will ye not drive the godless man from this land chorus hence stranger hence be gone unrighteous is thy present deed unrighteous the deed which thou hast done creon to his attendants twere time for you to lead off yon girl perforce if she will not go of her free will antigone wretched that i am whither shall i fly where find help from gods or men chorus threateningly to creon what wouldst thou stranger creon i will not touch yon man but her who is mine oedipus o elders of the land chorus stranger thy deed is not just creon tis just chorus how just creon i take mine own he lays his hand on antigone oedipus hear o athens chorus what wouldst thou stranger release her thy strength and ours will soon be proved they approach him with threatening gestures creon stand back chorus not from thee while this is thy purpose creon nay twill be war with thebes for thee if thou harm me oedipus said i not so chorus unhand the maid at once creon command not where thou art not master chorus leave hold i tell thee creon to one of his guards who at a signal seizes antigone and i tell thee be gone chorus to the rescue men of colonus to the rescue athens yea athens is outraged with the strong hand hither hither to our help antigone they drag me hence ah me friends friends oedipus where art thou my child blindly seeking for her antigone i am taken by force oedipus thy hands my child antigone nay i am helpless creon to his guards away with you oedipus ah me ah me exeunt guards with antigone creon 
so those two crutches shall never more prop thy steps but since tis thy will to worst thy country and thy friends whose mandate though a prince i here discharge then be that victory thine for hereafter i wot thou wilt come to know all this that now as in time past thou hast done thyself no good when in despite of friends thou hast indulged anger which is ever thy bane he turns to follow his guards chorus hold stranger creon hands off i say chorus i will not let thee go unless thou give back the maidens creon then wilt thou soon give thebes a still dearer prize i will seize more than those two girls chorus what whither wilt thou turn creon yon man shall be my captive chorus a valiant threat creon twill forthwith be a deed chorus ay unless the ruler of this realm hinder thee oedipus shameless voice wilt thou indeed touch me creon be silent oedipus nay may the powers of this place suffer me to utter yet this curse wretch who when these eyes were dark hath reft from me by force the helpless one who was mine eyesight therefore to thee and to thy race may the sun god the god who sees all things yet grant an old age such as mine creon see ye this people of the land oedipus they see both me and thee they know that my wrongs are deeds and my revenge but breath creon i will not curb my wrath nay alone though i am and slow with age i'll take yon man by force he approaches oedipus as if to seize him oedipus woe is me chorus tis a bold spirit that thou hast brought with thee stranger if thou thinkest to achieve this creon i do chorus then i will deem athens a city no more creon in a just cause the weak vanquishes the strong oedipus hear ye his words chorus yea words which he shall not turn to deeds zeus knows creon zeus haply knows thou dost not chorus insolence creon insolence which thou must bear chorus what ho people rulers of the land lo hither with all speed hither these men are on their way to cross our borders enter theseus theseus what means this shout what is the trouble what fear can have moved you to stay my sacrifice at the altar unto the sea-god the host of your colonus speak that i may know all since therefore have i sped hither with more than easeful speed of foot oedipus ah friend i know thy voice yon man but now hath done me foul wrong theseus what is that wrong and who hath wrought it speak oedipus creon whom thou seest there hath torn away from me my two children mine all theseus what dost thou tell me oedipus thou hast heard my wrong theseus to his attendants haste one of you to the altars yonder constrain the folk to leave the sacrifice and to speed footmen horsemen all with slack rein to the region where the two highways meet lest the maidens pass and i become a mockery to this stranger as one spoiled by force away i tell thee quick turning towards creon as for yon man if my wrath went as far as he deserves i would not have suffered him to go scatheless from my hand but now such law as he himself hath brought and no other shall be the rule for his correction addressing creon thou shalt not quit this land until thou bring those maidens and produce them in my sight for thy deed is a disgrace to me and to thine own race and to thy country thou hast come unto a city that observes justice and sanctions nothing without law yet thou hast put her lawful powers aside thou hast made this rude inroad thou art taking captives at thy pleasure and snatching prizes by violence as in the belief that my city was void of men or manned by slaves and i a thing of naught yet tis not by theban training that thou art base thebes is not wont to rear unrighteous sons nor would she praise thee if she learned that thou art spoiling me yea spoiling the gods when by force thou leadest off their hapless suppliant now were my foot upon thy soil never would i rest or plunder without license from the ruler of the land whoso he might be no though my claim were of all claims most just i should know how an alien ought to live among citizens but thou art shaming a city that deserves it not even thine own 
and the fullness of thy years brings thee an old age bereft of wit i have said then and i say it once again let the maidens be brought hither with all speed unless thou wouldst sojourn in this land by no free choice and this i tell thee from my soul as with my lips chorus seest thou thy plight o stranger thou art deemed to come of a just race but thy deeds are found evil creon not counting this city void of manhood son of aegeus nor of counsel as thou sayest have i wrought this deed but because i judge that its folk could never be so enamoured of my kinsfolk as to foster them against my will and i knew that this people would not receive a parricide a polluted man a man with whom had been found the unholy bride of her son such the wisdom i knew that dwells on the mount of ares in their land which suffers not such wanderers to dwell within this realm in that faith i sought to take this prize nor had i done so but that he was calling down bitter curses on me and on my race when being so wronged i deemed that i had warrant for this requital for anger knows no old age till death come the dead alone feel no smart therefore thou shalt act as seems to thee good for though my cause is just the lack of aid makes me weak yet old though i am i will endeavour to meet deed with deed oedipus o oh, shameless soul where thinkest thou falls this thy taunt on my age or on thine own bloodshed incest misery all this thy lips have launched against me all this that i have borne woe is me by no choice of mine for such was the pleasure of the gods wroth haply with the race from of old take me alone and thou couldst find no sin to upbraid me withal in quittance whereof i was driven to sin thus against myself and against my kin tell me now if by voice of oracle some divine doom was coming on my sire that he should die by a son's hand how couldst thou justly reproach me therewith who was then unborn whom no sire had yet begotten no mother's womb conceived and if when born to woe as i was born i met my sire in strife and slew him all ignorant what i was doing and to whom how couldst thou justly blame the unknowing deed and my mother wretch hast thou no shame in forcing me to speak of her nuptials when she was thy sister and they such as i will now tell for verily i will not be silent when thou hast gone so far in impious speech yea she was my mother o oh, misery my mother i knew it not nor she and for her shame bear children to the son whom she had borne but one thing at least i know that thy will consents thus to revile her and me but not of my free will did i wed her and not of free will do i speak now nay not in this marriage shall i be called guilty nor in that slaying of my sire which thou ever urgest against me with bitter reviling answer me but one thing that i ask thee if here and now one should come up and seek to slay thee thee the righteous wouldst thou ask if the murderer was thy father or wouldst thou reckon with him straightway i think as thou lovest thy life thou wouldst requite the culprit nor look around thee for thy warrant but such the plight into which i came led by gods and in this could my sire come back to life methinks he would not gainsay me yet thou for thou art not a just man but one who holds all things meet to utter knowing no barrier betwixt speech and silence thou tauntest me in such wise before yon men and thou findest it timely to flatter the renowned theseus and athens saying how well her state hath been ordered yet while giving such large praise thou forgettest this that if any land knows how to worship the gods with due rites this land excels therein whence thou hadst planned to steal me the suppliant the old man and didst seek to seize me and hast already carried off my daughters wherefore i now call on yon goddesses i supplicate them i adjure them with prayers to bring me help and to fight in my cause that thou mayest learn well by what manner of men this realm is guarded chorus the stranger is a good man o king his fate hath been accursed but tis worthy of our succour theseus enough of words the doers of the deed are in flight while we the sufferers stand still creon 
what then wouldst thou have a helpless man to do theseus show the way in their track while i escort thee that if in these regions thou hast the maidens of our quest thou thyself mayest discover them to me but if thy men are fleeing with the spoil in their grasp we may spare our trouble the chase is for others from whom they will never escape out of this land to thank their gods come forward the spoiler hath been spoiled i tell thee fate hath taken the hunter in the toils gains got by wrongful arts are soon lost and thou shalt have no ally in thine aim for well wot i that not without accomplice or resource hast thou gone to such a length of violence in the daring mood which hath inspired thee here no there was some one in whom thou wast trusting when thou didst essay these deeds and to this i must look nor make this city weaker than one man dost thou take my drift or seem these words as vain as seem the warnings when thy deed was still a planning creon say what thou wilt while thou art here i will not cavil but at home i too will know how to act theseus for the present threaten but go forward do thou oedipus stay here in peace i pray thee with my pledge that unless i die before i will not cease till i put thee in possession of thy children oedipus heaven reward thee theseus for thy nobleness and thy loyal care in my behalf exeunt theseus and attendants with creon on spectators left chorus o oh, to beware the foemen turned to bay will soon join in the brazen clangour of battle haply by the shores loved of apollo haply by that torch-lit strand where the great goddesses cherish dread rites for mortals on whose lips the ministrant eumolpidae have laid the precious seal of silence where methinks the war-waking theseus and the captives twain the sister-maids will soon meet within our borders amid a war-cry of men strong to save or perchance they will soon draw nigh to the pastures on the west of ea's snowy rock borne on horses in their flight or in chariots racing at speed creon will be worsted terrible are the warriors of colonus and the followers of theseus are terrible in their might yea the steel of every bridle flashes with slack bridle rein all the knighthood rides apace that worships our queen of chivalry athena and the earth-girdling sea-god the son of rhea's love is the battle now or yet to be for somehow my soul woos me to the hope that soon i shall be face to face with the maidens thus sorely tried thus sorely visited by the hand of a kinsman to-day to-day zeus will work some great thing i have presage of victory in the strife o oh, to be a dove with swift strength as of the storm that i might reach an airy cloud with gaze lifted above the fray hear all ruling lord of heaven all seeing zeus enable the guardians of this land in might triumphant to achieve the capture that gives the prize to their hands so grant thy daughter also our dread lady pallas athena and apollo the hunter and his sister who follows the dappled swift-footed deer fain am i that they should come a twofold strength to this land and to her people ah wanderer friend thou wilt not have to tax thy watcher with false augury for yonder i see the maidens drawing near with an escort oedipus where where how what sayest thou enter antigone and ismene with theseus and his attendants on the spectators left end of part three recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four of oedipus at colonus by sophocles translated by richard c jebb eighteen forty one to nineteen o five this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four enter antigone and ismene with theseus and his attendants on the spectators left antigone o oh, father father that some god would suffer thine eyes to see this noble man who hath brought us here to thee oedipus my child ye are here indeed antigone's yea for these strong arms have saved us theseus and his trusty followers oedipus come ye hither my child let me embrace you restored beyond all hope antigone's thy wish shall be granted 
we crave what we bestow oedipus where then where are ye antigone here approaching thee together oedipus my darlings antigone a father loves his own oedipus props of mine age antigone and sharers of thy sorrow oedipus i hold my dear ones and now should i die i were not wholly wretched since ye have come to me press close to me on either side children cleave to your sire and repose from this late roaming so forlorn so grievous and tell me what hath passed as shortly as ye may brief speech sufficeth for young maidens antigone here is our deliverer from him thou shouldst hear the story father since his is the deed so shall my part be brief oedipus sir marvel not if with such yearning i prolong my words unto my children found again beyond my hope for well i wot that this joy in respect of them hath come to me from thee and thee alone thou hast rescued them and no man beside and may the gods deal with thee after my wish with thee and with this land for among you above all humankind have i found the fear of heaven and the spirit of fairness and the lips that lie not i know these things which with these words i requite for what i have i have through thee and no man else stretch forth thy right hand o king i pray thee that i may touch it and if tis lawful kiss thy cheek but what am i saying unhappy as i have become how could i wish thee to touch one with whom all stain of sin hath made us dwelling no not i nor allow thee if thou wouldst they alone can share this burden to whom it hath come home receive my greeting where thou standest and in the future still give me thy loyal care as thou hast given it to this hour theseus no marvel is it to me if thou hast shown some mind to large discourse for joy in these thy children and if thy first care hath been for their words rather than for me indeed there is naught to vex me in that not in words so much as deeds would i make the lustre of my life thou hast the proof i have failed in nothing of my sworn faith to thee old man here am i with the maidens living yes scatheless of those threats and how the fight was won what need that i should idly boast when thou wilt learn it from these maidens in converse but there is a matter that hath newly chanced to me as i came hither lend me thy counsel thereon for small though it be tis food for wonder and mortal man should deem nothing beneath his care oedipus what is it son of aegeus tell me i myself know naught of that whereof thou askest theseus a man they say not thy countryman yet thy kinsman hath somehow cast himself a suppliant at our altar of poseidon where i was sacrificing when i first set out hither oedipus of what land is he what craves he by the supplication theseus i know one thing only they say he asks brief speech with thee which shall not irk thee much oedipus on what theme that suppliant posture is not trivial theseus he asks they say no more than that he may confer with thee and return unharmed from his journey hither oedipus who can he be who thus implores the god theseus look if ye have any kinsman at argos who might crave this boon of thee oedipus o friend say no word more theseus what ails thee oedipus ask it not of me theseus ask what speak oedipus by those words i know who is the suppliant theseus and who can he be against whom i should have a grief oedipus my son o king the hated son whose words would vex mine ear as the words of no man beside theseus what canst thou not listen without doing what thou wouldst not why should it pain thee to hear him oedipus most hateful king hath that voice become to his sire lay me not under constraint to yield in this theseus but think whether his suppliant state constrains thee what if thou hast a duty of respect for the god antigone father hearken to me though i be young who counsel allow the king to gratify his own heart and to gratify the god as he wishes and for thy daughter's sake allow our brother to come for he will not pluck thee perforce from thy resolve never fear by such words as shall not be spoken for thy good but to hear him speak 
what harm can be in that ill-devised deeds thou knowest are bewrayed by speech thou art his sire so that e'en if he were to wrong thee with the most impious of foul wrongs my father it is not lawful for thee to wrong him again oh let him come other men also have evil offspring and are swift to wrath but they hear advice and are charmed from their mood by the gentle spells of friends look thou to the past not to the present think on all that thou hast borne through sire and mother and if thou considerest those things well i wot thou wilt discern how evil is the end that waits on evil wrath not slight are thy reasons to think thereon bereft as thou art of the sight that returns no more nay yield to us it is not seemly for just suitors to sue long it is not seemly that a man should receive good and thereafter lack the mind to requite it oedipus my child tis sore for me this pleasure that ye win from me by your pleading but be it as ye will only if that man is to come hither friend let no one ever become master of my life theseus i need not to hear such words more than once old man i would not boast but be sure that thy life is safe while any god saves mine exit theseus to the right of the spectators chorus whoso craves the ampler length of life not content to desire a modest span him will i judge with no uncertain voice he cleaves to folly for the long days lay up full many things nearer unto grief than joy but as for thy delights their place shall know them no more when a man's life hath lapsed beyond the fitting term and the deliverer comes at the last to all alike when the doom of hades is suddenly revealed without marriage song or lyre or dance even death at the last not to be born is past all prizing best but when a man hath seen the light this is next best by far that with all speed he should go thither whence he hath come for when he hath seen youth go by with its light follies what troublous affliction is strange to his lot what suffering is not therein envy faction strife battles and slaughters and last of all age claims him for her own age dispraised infirm unsociable unfriended with whom all woe of woe abide in such years is yon hapless one not i alone and as some cape that fronts the north is lashed on every side by the waves of winter so he also is fiercely lashed evermore by the dread troubles that break on him like billows some from the setting of the sun some from the rising some in the region of the noontide beam some from the gloom-wrapped hills of the north antigone lo yonder methinks i see the stranger coming hither yea without attendance my father the tears streaming from his eyes oedipus who is he antigone the same who was in our thoughts from the first polynices hath come to us enter polynices on the spectator's left polynices ah me what shall i do whether shall i weep first for mine own sorrow sisters or for mine aged sires as i see them yonder whom i have found in a strange land an exile here with you twain clad in such raiment whereof the foul squalor hath dwelt with that aged form so long a very blight upon his flesh while above the sightless eyes the unkempt hair flutters in the breeze and matching with these things meseems is the food that he carries hapless one against hunger's pinch wretch that i am i learn all this too late and i bear witness that i am proved the vilest of men in all that touches care for thee from mine own lips hear what i am but seeing that zeus himself in all that he doeth hath mercy for the sharer of his throne may she come to thy side also my father for the faults can be healed but can never more be made worse a pause why art thou silent speak father turn not away from me hast thou not even an answer for me wilt thou dismiss me in mute scorn without telling wherefore thou art wroth o ye his daughters sisters mine strive ye at least to move our sire's implacable inexorable silence that he send me not away dishonoured who am the suppliant of the god in such wise as this with no word of response antigone tell him thyself unhappy one what thou hast come to seek 
as words flow perchance they touch to joy perchance they glow with anger or with tenderness and so they somehow give a voice to the dumb polyneikes then will i speak boldly for thou dost admonish me well first claiming the help of the god himself from whose altar the king of this land raised me that i might come hither with warranty to speak and hear and go my way unharmed and i will crave strangers that these pledges be kept with me by you and by my sisters here and by my sire but now i would fain tell thee father why i came i have been driven an exile from my fatherland because as eldest born i claim to sit in thy sovereign seat wherefore eteocles though the younger thrust me from the land when he had neither worsted me in argument nor come to trial of might and deed no but won the city over and of this i deem it most likely that the curse on thy house is the cause then from soothsayers also i so hear for when i came to dorian argos i took the daughter of adrastus to wife and i bound to me by oath all of the apian land who are foremost in renown of war that with them i might levy the sevenfold host of spearmen against thebes and die in my just cause or cast the doers of this wrong from the realm well and wherefore have i come hither now with suppliant prayers my father unto thee mine own and the prayers of mine allies who now with seven hosts behind their seven spears have set their leaguer round the plain of thebes of whom is swift-speared amphiaraus matchless warrior matchless augur then the son of aeneas aetolian tydeus eteoclus third of argive birth the fourth hippomedon sent by talios his sire while capaneus the fifth vaunts that he will burn thebes with fire unto the ground and sixth arcadian parthenopeus rushes to the war named from that virgin of other days whose marriage in after time gave him birth trusty son of atalanta last i thy son or if not thine but offspring of an evil fate yet thine at least in name lead the fearless host of argos unto thebes and we by these thy children and by thy life my father implore thee all praying thee to remit thy stern wrath against me as i go forth to chastise my brother who hath thrust me out and robbed me of my fatherland for if aught of truth is told by oracles they said that victory should be with those whom thou shouldst join then by our fountains and by the gods of our race i ask thee to hearken and to yield a beggar and an exile am i an exile thou by court to others we have a home both thou and i sharers of one doom while he king in the house woe is me mocks in his pride at thee and me alike but if thou assist my purpose small toil or time and i will scatter his strength to the winds and so will i bring thee and establish thee in thine own house and establish myself when i have cast him out by force be thy will with me and that boast may be mine without thee i cannot e'en return alive chorus for his sake who hath sent him oedipus speak as seems thee good ere thou send the man away oedipus nay then my friends guardians of this land were not theseus he who had sent him hither to me desiring that he should have my response never should he have heard this voice but now he shall be graced with it ere he go yea and hear from me such words as shall never gladden his life villain who when thou hadst the sceptre and the throne which now thy brother hath in thebes dravest me thine own father into exile and madest me cityless and madest me to wear this garb which now thou weepest to behold when thou hast come into the same stress of misery as i the time for tears is past no i must bear this burden while i live ever thinking of thee as of a murderer for tis thou that hast brought my days to this anguish tis thou that hast thrust me out to thee i owe it that i wander begging my daily bread from strangers and had these daughters not been born to be my comfort verily i had been dead for aught of help from thee now these girls preserve me these my nurses these who are men not women in true service but ye are aliens and no sons of mine therefore the eyes of fate look upon thee not yet as they will look anon if indeed those hosts are moving against thebes never canst thou overthrow that city 
no first shalt thou fall stained with bloodshed and thy brother likewise such the curses that my soul sent forth before against you twain and such do i now invoke to fight for me that ye may deem it meet to revere parents nor scorn your father utterly because he is sightless who begat such sons for these maidens did not thus so my curses have control of thy supplication and thy throne if indeed justice revealed from of old sits with zeus in the might of the eternal laws and thou be gone abhorred of me and unfathered be gone thou vilest of the vile and with thee take these curses which i call down on thee never to vanquish the land of thy race nor ever return to hill girt argos but by a kindred hand to die and slay him by whom thou hast been driven out such is my prayer and i call the paternal darkness of dread tartarus to take thee unto another home i call the spirits of this place i call the destroying god who hath set that dreadful hatred in you twain go with these words in thine ears go and publish it to the cadmians all yea and to thine own staunch allies that oedipus hath divided such honours to his sons chorus polynikes in thy past goings i take no joy and now go thy way with speed polynikes alas for my journey and my baffled hope alas for my comrades what an end was that march to have whereon we sallied forth from argos woe is me i such an end that i may not even utter it to any of my companions or turn them back but must go in silence to meet this doom ah ye his daughters and my sisters since ye hear these hard prayers of your sire if this father's curses be fulfilled and some way of return to thebes be found for you o oh, as ye fear the gods do not for your part dishonour me nay give me burial and do funeral rites and so the praise which ye now win from yonder man for your service shall be increased by another praise not less by reason of the office wrought for me antigone polynikes i entreat thee hear me in one thing polynikes what is it dearest antigone speak antigone turn thy host back to argos ay with all speed and destroy not thyself in thebes polynikes nay it cannot be for how again could i lead the same host when once i had blenched antigone but why my brother should thine anger rise again what gain is promised thee in destroying thy native city polynikes tis shame to be in exile and eldest born as i am to be thus mocked on my brother's part antigone seest thou then to what sure fulfilment thou art bringing his prophecies who bodes mutual slaying for you twain polynikes ay for he wishes it but i must not yield antigone ah oh, me unhappy but who will dare to follow thee hearing what prophecies yon man hath uttered polynikes i will not e'en report ill tidings tis a good leader's part to tell the better news and not the worse antigone brother thy resolve then is thus fixed polynikes yea and detain me not for mine it shall be to tread yon path with evil doom and omen from this my sire and from his furies but for you twain may zeus make your path bright if ye do my wishes when i am dead since in my life ye can do them no more he gently disengages himself from their embrace now release me and farewell for never more shall ye behold me living antigone woe is me polynikes mourn not for me antigone and who would not bewail thee brother who thus art hurrying to death foreseen polynikes if tis fate i must die antigone nay nay hear my pleading polynikes plead not amiss antigone then woe is me indeed if i must lose thee polynikes nay that rests with fortune that end or another for you twain at least i pray the gods that ye never meet with ill for in all men's eyes ye are unworthy to suffer exit on spectators left end of part four recording by expatriate in bangor maine part five 
of oedipus at colonus by sophocles translated by richard c jebb eighteen forty one to nineteen o five this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part five chorus behold new ills have newly come in our hearing from the sightless stranger ills fraught with a heavy doom unless perchance fate is finding its goal for tis not mine to say that a decree of heaven is ever vain watchful ay watchful of those decrees is time overthrowing some fortunes and on the morrow lifting others again to honour hark that sound in the sky zeus defend us thunder is heard oedipus my children my children if there be any man to send would that some one would fetch hither the peerless theseus antigone and what father is the aim of thy summons oedipus this winged thunder of zeus will lead me anon to hades nay send and tarry not a second peal is heard chorus hark with louder noise it crashes down unutterable hurled by zeus the hair of my head stands up for fear my soul is sore dismayed for again the lightning flashes in the sky or to what event will it give birth i am afraid for never in vain doth it rush forth or without grave issue o thou dread sky o zeus oedipus daughters his destined end hath come upon your sire he can turn his face from it no more antigone how knowest thou what sign hath told thee this oedipus i know it well but let some one go i pray you with all speed and bring hither the lord of this realm another peal chorus ha ah, listen once again that piercing thunder voice is around us be merciful o thou god be merciful if thou art bringing aught of gloom for the land our mother gracious may i find thee nor because i have looked on a man accursed have some meed not of blessing for my portion o zeus our lord to thee i cry oedipus is the man near will he find me still alive children and master of my mind antigone and what is the pledge which thou wouldst have fixed in thy mind oedipus in return for his benefits i would duly give him the requital promise when i received them chorus what ho my son hither come hither or if in the glade's inmost recess for the honour of the sea-god poseidon thou art hallowing his altar with sacrifice come thence worthy art thou in the stranger's sight worthy are thy city and thy folk that he should render a just recompense for benefits haste come quickly o king enter theseus on the spectator's right theseus wherefore once more rings forth a summons from you all from my people as clearly as from our guest can a thunderbolt from zeus be the cause or rushing hail in its fierce onset all forebodings may find place when the gods send such a storm oedipus king welcome is thy presence and tis some god that hath made for thee the good fortune of this coming theseus and what new thing hath now befallen son of laius oedipus my life hangs in the scale and i fain would die guiltless of bad faith to thee and to this city in respect of my pledges theseus and what sign of thy fate holds thee in suspense oedipus the gods their own heralds bring me the tidings with no failure in the signs appointed of old theseus what sayest thou are the signs of these things old man oedipus the thunder peal on peal the lightning flash on flash hurled from the unconquered hand theseus thou winnest my belief for in much i find thee a prophet whose voice is not false then speak what must be done oedipus son of aegeus i will unfold that which shall be a treasure for this thy city such as age can never mar anon unaided and with no hand to guide me i will show the way to the place where i must die but that place reveal thou never unto mortal man tell not where it is hidden nor in what region it lies that so it may ever make for thee a defence better than many shields better than the succouring spear of neighbours but for mysteries which speech may not profane thou shalt mark them for thyself when thou comest to that place alone since neither to any of this people can i utter them nor to mine own children dear though they are no guard them thou alone 
and when thou art coming to the end of life disclose them to thy heir alone let him teach his heir and so thenceforth and thus shalt thou hold this city unscathed from the side of the dragon's brood full many states lightly enter on offence even though their neighbour lives aright for the gods are slow though they are sure in visitation when men scorn godliness and turn to frenzy not such be thy fate son of aegeus nay thou knowest such things without my precepts but to that place for the divine summons urges me let us now set forth and hesitate no more as if suddenly inspired he moves with slow but firm steps towards the left of the scene beckoning the others onward my children follow me thus for i now have in strange wise been made your guide as ye were your sires on touch me not nay suffer me unaided to find out that sacred tomb where tis my portion to be buried in this land this way hither this way for this way doth guiding hermes lead me and the goddess of the dead o light no light to me mine once thou wast i ween but now my body feels thee for the last time for now go i to hide the close of my life with hades truest of friends blessed be thou in this land and thy lieges and when your days are blessed think on me the dead for your welfare evermore he passes from the stage on the spectator's left followed by his daughters theseus and attendants chorus if with prayer i may adore the unseen goddess and thee lord of the children of night o oh, hear me idonius idonius not in pain not by a doom that wakes sore lament may the stranger pass to the fields of the dead below the all enshrouding into the stygian house many were the sorrows that came to him without cause but in requital a just god will lift him up goddesses infernal and thou dread form of the unconquered hound thou who hast thy lair in those gates of many guests thou untamable watcher of hell gnarling from the cavern's jaws as rumour from the beginning tells of thee hear me o death son of earth and tartarus may that watcher leave a clear path for the stranger on his way to the nether fields of the dead to thee i call giver of the eternal sleep messenger countryman my tidings might most shortly be summed thus oedipus is gone but the story of the hap may not be told in brief words as the deeds yonder were not briefly done chorus he is gone hapless one messenger be sure that he hath passed from life chorus ah how by a god-sent doom and painless messenger there thou touchest on what is indeed worthy of wonder how he moved hence thou thyself must know since thou wast here with no friend to show the way but guide himself unto us all now when he had come to this sheer threshold bound by brazen steps to earth's deep roots he paused in one of many branching paths near the basin in the rock where the inviolate covenant of theseus and Perithous hath its memorial he stood midway between that basin and the thorician stone the hollow pear-tree and the marble tomb then sat him down and loosed his sordid raiment and then he called his daughters and he bade them fetch water from some fount that he should wash and make a drink offering and they went to the hill which was in view demeter's hill who guards the tender plants and in short space brought that which their father had enjoined then they ministered to him with washing and dressed him as use ordains but when he had content of doing all and no part of his desire was now unheeded then was thunder from the zeus of the shades and the maidens shuddered as they heard they fell at their father's knees and wept nor ceased from beating the breast and wailing very sore and when he heard their sudden bitter cry he put his arms around them and said my children this day ends your father's life for now all hath perished that was mine and no more shall ye bear the burden of tending me no light one well i know my children yet one little word makes all those toils as naught love had ye from me as from none besides and now ye shall have me with you no more through all your days to come on such wise close clinging to each other sire and daughters sobbed and wept but when they had made an end of wailing and the sound went up no more there was a stillness and suddenly a voice of one who cried aloud to him so that the hair of all stood up on their heads for sudden fear and they were afraid 
for the god called him with many callings in manifold oedipus oedipus why delay we to go thou tarriest too long but when he perceived that he was called of the god he craved that the king theseus should draw near and when he came near said o my friend give i pray thee the solemn pledge of thy right hand to my children and ye daughters to him and promise thou never to forsake them of thy free will but to do all things for thy good as thy friendship and the time may prompt and he like a man of noble spirit without making lament sware to keep that promise to his friend but when theseus had so promised straightway oedipus felt for his children with blind hands and said o my children ye must be nobly brave of heart and depart from this place nor ask to behold unlawful sights or to hear such speech as may not be heard nay go with all haste only let theseus be present as is his right a witness of those things which are to be so spake he and we all heard and with streaming tears and with lamentation we followed the maidens away but when we had gone apart after no long time we looked back and oedipus we saw nowhere any more but the king alone holding his hand before his face to screen his eyes as if some dread sight had been seen and such as none might endure to behold and then after a short space we saw him salute the earth and the home of the gods above both at once in one prayer but by what doom oedipus perished no man can tell save theseus alone no fiery thunderbolt of the god removed him in that hour nor any rising of storm from the sea but either a messenger from the gods or the world of the dead the nether adamant riven for him in love without pain for the passing of the man was not with lamentation or in sickness and suffering but above mortals wonderful and if to any i seem to speak folly i would not woo their belief who count me foolish chorus and where are the maidens and their escort messenger not far hence for the sounds of mourning tell plainly that they approach antigone woe woe now indeed is it for us unhappy sisters in all fullness to bewail the curse on the blood that is ours from our sire for him while he lived we bore that long pain without pause and at the last a sight and a loss that baffle thought are ours to tell chorus and how is it with you antigone we can but conjecture friends chorus he is gone antigone even as thou mightest wish yea surely when death met him not in war or on the deep but he was snatched to the viewless fields by some swift strange doom ah me and a night as of death hath come on the eyes of us twain for how shall we find our bitter livelihood roaming to some far land or on the waves of the sea ismene i know not o oh, that deadly hades would join me in death unto mine aged sire woe is me i cannot live the life that must be mine chorus best of daughters sisters twain heaven's doom must be borne be no more fired with too much grief ye have so fared that ye should not repine antigone ah so care past can seem lost joy for that which was no way sweet had sweetness while therewith i held him in mine embrace ah father dear one ah thou who hast put on the darkness of the underworld for ever not even there shalt thou ever lack our love her love and mine chorus he hath fared antigone he hath fared as he would chorus in what wise antigone on foreign ground the ground of his choice he hath died in the shadow of the grave he hath his bed for ever and he hath left mourning behind him not barren of tears for with these streaming eyes father i bewail thee nor know i ah me how to quell my sorrow for thee my sorrow that is so great ah me twas thy wish to die in a strange land but now thou hast died without gifts at my hand ismene woe is me what new fate thinkst thou awaits thee and me my sister thus orphaned of our sire chorus nay since he hath found a blessed end my children cease from this lament no mortal is hard for evil fortune to capture antigone sister let us hasten back ismene unto what deed antigone a longing fills my soul ismene whereof antigone 
to see the dark home ismene of whom antigone ah me of our sire ismene and how can this thing be lawful hast thou no understanding antigone why this reproof ismene and knowest thou not this also antigone what wouldst thou tell me more ismene that he was perishing without tomb apart from all antigone lead me thither and then slay me also ismene ah me unhappy friendless and helpless where am i now to live my hapless life chorus my children fear not antigone but whither am i to flee chorus already a refuge hath been found antigone how meanest thou chorus for your fortunes that no harm should touch them antigone i know it well chorus what then is thy thought antigone how we are to go home i cannot tell chorus and do not seek to go antigone trouble besets us chorus and erstwhile bore hardly on you antigone desperate then and now more cruel than despair chorus great verily is the sea of your troubles antigone alas alas o zeus whither shall we turn to what last hope doth fate now urge us enter theseus on the spectator's right theseus weep no more maidens for where the kindness of the dark powers is an abiding grace to the quick and to the dead there is no room for mourning divine anger would follow antigone son of aegeus we supplicate thee theseus for the obtaining of what desire my children antigone we fain would look with our own eyes upon our father's tomb theseus nay it is not lawful antigone how sayest thou king lord of athens theseus my children he gave me charge that no one should draw nigh unto that place or greet with voice the sacred tomb wherein he sleeps and he said that while i duly kept that word i should always hold the land unharmed these pledges therefore were heard from my lips by the god and by the all-seeing watcher of oaths the servant of zeus antigone nay then if this is pleasing to the dead with this we must content us but send us to thebes the ancient if haply we may hinder the bloodshed that is threatened to our brothers theseus so will i do and if in aught beside i can profit you and pleasure the dead who hath lately gone from us i am bound to spare no pains chorus come cease lamentation lift it up no more for verily these things stand fast end of part five recording by expatriate in bangor maine end of oedipus at colonus by sophocles translated by richard c jebb eighteen forty one to nineteen o five